Well, hello there, my name is HW, back again uh, for week number two. Um, couple changes. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who watched That Kemper Show number one. Uh, an incredible response, and Britt and I were at NAMM. We were hanging out at the Kemper booth, and there were so many people taking pictures with us going, hey, it's the guys from That Kemper Show, which is crazy. Now, obviously, episode one, it was an homage to Dan and Mick. We were having a lot of fun with that sort of theme. Those guys have built a super awesome show and a really awesome brand. Like I said before, it's weekly viewing for us. Um, the whole idea for M. Britt and I getting together really came out of the idea of, you know, what if there was a YouTube show, uh, kind of like the shows we watch, but it was just dedicated to the Kemper community. It got into all the issues that Kemper users are facing. We talk about the editor and monitoring and the Kemper and parameters and definition and all that stuff. So Michael, Britt, and I want to keep going forward, um, but, you know, uh, we wanna, we're doing our own thing, right? So... Um, we really love this idea of uh, a Kemper show, so we're going to call it The Kemper Show. And uh, we're back. This is week number two. We're going to pick up right where we left off. We're already on the calendar filming more stuff. If you would like to let us know what you'd like to see Embrit and HW tackle in a future episode of The Kemper Show, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Without further ado, The Kemper Show, episode two. Let's go! brilliant guitar. <laughs> you this, sound great on it, too. Thank you so much. This, um, it's the same pickups as I play. Sort of. Sort of. Sort it's, of. It's the S90s. It is the S90s. But you've gone and done all sorts of magic with the magnets and such. I put the magnets in a freezer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. You de them I, over 40 years <laughs> in the exactly. freezer. No. With the, did not use a freezer. What'd you do on here? Because everybody, you know, knows I am really outspoken. P90s are the best. You are too. Yeah, I love uh, we we both love P90s, but I really love those S90s. The S90s um, are great. Yeah, you know, they sounded a little modern for me, which is not yeah, a bad thing. They, it's no, just a different flavor. They definitely have that that thing, and I've never really known if it was maybe some of the silent single coil system, or what you know caused that. I definitely hear it. I like them, but I also really like. Um, I, I love vintage yeah. sounds and tones. I love low output humbuckers, and I yeah. love like some of the Fender Custom Shop pickups that I think really just nail that like oh, era, yeah. you know. Um, but so what my if, main Anderson that the, it was my original three P ninety. I put Duncan Antiquities in it, which are whatever they do, degauss and yeah, whatever they yeah, do yeah, to yeah. make them old sounding. Right, and they do. They sound really vintagey. Yeah. So when I would compare the new S nineties to that guitar. The other one just had a little softer sweetness to it. So I thought, what can I do to this? Right. Short of just gutting and replacing the pickups. So I just swapped the magnets. So what'd you put in here? I believe now there's Alnico 4s in the in the neck and middle, and I think an Alnico 3 in the bridge. Well, two out. There's two magnets per pickup, so. Yeah, and it sounds to me like we can compare these two guitars, but um, I know what that guitar sounds like really well, but these sound like, kind of like that, but just a little more vintagey. Yeah, it's a little bit warmer, sweeter sound. Too. Yeah, you describe it as woody. Woody, yeah. To me, it's it's a little more almost three D. Yeah, there's you know? a little bit more dimension in yeah, it. Yeah, there is for sure. The bridge. Um, what magazine did you put in here? Alico threes. This has a little more of that um, Nashville telly. That was almost the three country licks the, that I know. That was, all, that was most of the ones I know. <laughs> That's all of them. <laughs> now, my, main, my, favorite Les, my favorite Les Paul I've ever had has Alnico 3 magnets. That's why I thought, well, I'll try an Alnico 3 in there. Or yeah. some Alnico 3. So, yeah. And it does have just a super sweet, airy sound to it. This is a fantastic uh, sounding guitar. Thanks. Um, this is really great. It really is. I'm really jealous. I love mahogany body and necks. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of those mm -hmm. guitars now, but... I just love them. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna call Sir and say, "Give me the Embrit special." <laughs> They're gonna go, "What? What?" <laughs> what? 
one Mateus Asada special coming up. I designed that. There's a, I forget which music store has a sewer designer. So you can get mm -hmm. on there and just choose yeah. what pickups you want. And, yeah. and it shows you Matt's, visual. visual Matt's music, Matt, right? That's it. Had a visual representation of what the guitar looked like. This is supposed to be a root beer finish, and I guess it is a root beer finish. Yeah. But when I saw it on the computer, it was much lighter, and there's much more drastic difference between mm. the dark and the light. And so when I got it, I was like, oh, this doesn't look like the way I wanted it to, but I'm used to it now, so it looks... It's this, nice and classy looking. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Here, play um, play that guitar a little bit so people can hear how it sounds. <laughs> very focused which is good it's a really nice sound yeah the high end is where I hear like the most difference yeah but also the low end <laughs> yeah. but you know and, my, and the low and end. the low end and sort of the maybe middle in too. the middle too it, it they really they, they really sound different but the same you know what I mean you can yeah. tell they, they come from similar yeah. things there's some similar things and there's different body wood that's mahogany with a maple yeah cap, and that's, mahogany neck. this is so who knows really what the, or something I might switch the magnets in there now after this and then it's relatively easy yeah and then well i'll probably just have you do it that's I'll, fine. I'll buy a hot chicken and you can switch the magnets out and then uh i fixed susan's duesenberg by the way you did you <laughs> did and you know this um but then we're going to be into well the body woods are different yeah we should probably talk about the kemper at some point it is that show it, it is that it is that that kemper show and it's episode two and it's episode our two. favorite profiles okay well, ever? Well, <laughs> yeah, ever? yeah. The, um, ever. Okay. Maybe ever. Maybe. Ever. Well, well, we've all done, we've both done so many profiles. For I don't the, know how you even choose. For the day, uh, these are my favorite for now. Um, my favorite lately has been these two rec this profiles. This sounds fantastic, whatever this is. Thank you, thank you. Um, they, this amp really, uh, really impressed me. It, it's a clone, it's a two rock ruby. And it's a clone of a um, of of those old train wreck, yeah. you know, heads. And you know, originally there were only like a hundred train wrecks made. Right. I mean, they're very rare. Mm -hmm. There's less than the Dumbles that are out there. Oh yeah. Um, and now uh, there's a gentleman who still makes them in the basement where Ken made them oh, in really? Ken's mom's house, with the same cab to dial them in. With the oh. same. I mean, it's there's really a lot like going on there. Um, and it's a. I think it's a. People have different opinions about it. It's a it, the guy's definitely trying to honor the, mm -hmm. the legacy and what it is, and he's trying to do everything exactly the same. Um, and they're still very expensive, but uh, but they're not like fifty k anymore. They're not double expensive. No, no, no. Um, but uh, so I guess the story is the ruby they made for a little while and they hmm. didn't. Anyway, it's I don't know what it is about that sort of circuit. I've never even played through one. It, it's got this amazing touch sensitivity. And, um, you know, I did a video, you know, is the Kemper touch sensitive, trying to show off that. And to me, it's more touch sensitive than 95% of amps I've ever played because you've got that compressor in there. Right. So, and that's really kind of where you can control it all. Uh, but to me, um, I love these profiles because they clean up really well and they sound uh, just sort of great with every guitar I throw at it. Like, uh, like this one. We should play it. Yeah, let me, let's do that. really good and I love I just feel like it cleans up well oh, yeah. but still sounds just like punchy and and it's just it's warm but there's a really pretty top on it too. Yeah, yeah yeah I actually think that that's an under uh, sort of recognized um, characteristic to things that people say are touch sensitive 
I, I, I think there's a good amount of top end in it. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because unless you do the treble bleed thing, right. you've got to have enough top end when you come down, uh, which I think is one of the reasons why a lot of those guys tend to play strats anyway, the ones right. who it's most important to. Right. You know, the sing you need a single volume guitar and one with a lot of high end. Although um, this thing, I would maybe say even sounds better with uh, humbuckers. Hmm. Is that possible? It's so authentic, it even good. went out of tune a little bit. Oh, it sounds great. <laughs> it sounds great. Um, it sounds great. That has everything I want in a profile, though. It's, it cleans up, sounds great with multiple guitars. Some profiles don't yeah. translate to different guitars. Some amps don't sound that's great true. with multiple guitars. Which... Well, and that's probably why they don't. the profiles don't. Uh-huh, right, right, exactly. It's like you said, um, you get out what you put into it. Yep. You know, you put a great amp in, you get a great amp out. But this right now is one of my favorites. I'm even like... So much so that, um, I don't know about you, I, I buy and sell a lot of amps, you know, to profile them and stuff, and, and I borrow them, of course, when you can't, like we all do, but um, I have this amp, and I really am itching for a real train wreck. Mm. And I'm even going like, but wait a minute, you have an amp you love so much, why would you I sell would it? I would keep this. I mean, I've I played a train wreck clone. Man, it was very grainy. It did not have the sweetness that mm -hmm. this has. Well, I don't know if uh, I don't. I, I don't even know how authentic the ruby is to a real whatever it is, you know, it wreck or whatever. Good. But you know, all those wrecks were di all those wrecks yeah. were different. That's oh, why yeah. they all had names and mm -hmm. not serial numbers. Right. So who knows? But for for today, this is my favorite. How about you? I have a favorite one of your profiles. What is that? My so I would say for the first. Six months to a year, I exclusively, well, not exclusively, I had a, I had a, you know, a full pack. I think I had pack two of yours. or, um, But I, 90% of the time was playing uh, the the 3P. MB. MB. Uh, it was the ones that say AC and BF. Yeah. It was the two of that same channel. Yeah. So that was one of, that was one of your amps that. Uh, that was a 100 watt amp that I had him make for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had a I had a British Dream that I transformed into a, what became the Dreamweaver. So, it originally had an AC channel and a Plexi channel. I took the AC channel and made it a blackface channel. Yeah. So now it was blackface and, and Plexi. Yeah. And that was his basis for doing the Dreamweaver. Yeah. And then I needed at the time I was using my camper, but I wanted a hundred watt amp to run it through, but then also use the amp for when I needed a real amp gig. Yeah. So I had to make me a hundred watt version of what became the Dual Citizen, which had the AC thirty circuit or the AC circuit circuit and his blackface circuit so it's a hundred watt blackface and AC so if you can imagine yeah. hundred watt box which you never see right and then a uh, hundred watt blackface amp which it did not sound like a twin because it had a lot more mids in it yeah um, but that's what that amp is yeah. it's great great they're great profiles are yes. those in pack two two or three two okay uh, it may be two yeah. I can't remember yeah two to pack two or three yeah that and the JT, your JTM 45 profiles, I played those a lot. Like, that was pack that was, two, I think, yeah. So it like, may have all been in pack Yeah, two. there was a good like couple months there where that's all I played. And believe it or not, that, um, I believe if it was the JTM 45, was, was there one that said SAO or whatever? Anyway. Maybe. It wasn't actually a Marshall. It was a British audio made. Shane made it. It was a, <laughs> hey. it was a Blues Breaker JTM 45 <laughs> clone. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, great it's a friend of mine's aunt, but yeah, Shane made that. Yeah, that's funny. What about you? Favorite profile? Uh, probably one of my blackface third powers. Yeah. And then I've done a, a more recent, I got a Morgan RCA 35. And the cool thing about that amp is you can put any power tubes in it. Yeah. So it biases um, like it needs to. So I prefer it with 6L6s, but it sounds really good with the L34s too. And 6Vs, it doesn't sound bad. But um, What packs that in? It is not in a pack yet. It's not even out yet. It'll be my next pack. Probably. First, you teased people last week with the 57 Tweed Deluxe. And that'll be in the next pack. Too. I just, and I've, that'll be in the next pack. And now another one. I know. And people say, I'm the marketer. I'm not even trying to market. I'm just saying, 
I haven't had enough to like make a full pack out, and they're not enough to even make a mini pack of each amp. Well, so. you got to show us how it sounds. All right, let me go here. There we go. Oh, smart. Okay. I, 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 I prepped. You want your guitar? All right. So this is just a basic blackface clean sound. Yeah. <laughs> full sounding that's that's the Morgan yeah the third power that I'm used to is this one tonally very very similar huh. the Morgan just has a little bit more bottom you can tell they're in the same family yeah little... would you mic them up the same and everything it's hard to say. Yeah, I'm wanting to say maybe this Morgan maybe is only a 57, and it's not even my normal cabinet. It's the Morgan cabinet. Okay. So there's some slight differences there. Yeah, because it sound they sound very um, similar. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of just you know, I was it, troubleshooting one day. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you ever get this, but someday you're running profiles and it's not working, so you just kind of mm -hmm. start working backwards. Yeah. And I thought I'm just gonna run it into, like it was literally sitting right next to me. I never profile with the amp sitting next to me because it's so loud right um but it was just sitting there i just threw a 57 on it and it like it sounded pretty good so i did a couple more and that's the third one i did of that little pack i believe so i this may just be a 57. so the morgan's your favorite uh for now i go back and forth yeah sometimes like the morgan just out. sounds a little bit thick in some venues uh and then some and other times the third power seems thin so is this your performance that you play live no i was gonna say you've just never titled it no, I just, <laughs> I, I dragged my, my uh, sounds into yours, so I thought, okay. well, instead of me scrolling for two I, I hours on camera, I just, I dropped yeah, it yeah. in. <laughs> That's the Morgan. Yeah. Here's the... It's a little different in the top end too, but they're yeah. they're very similar. They're very similar, and they both work really well. All of this year, I've been using pedals with it. Mm -hmm. I made the mistake of uh, this all goes back. If you want to hear a long story, I tell you the long story. Why not? Okay, so I traded or whatever I did. I don't remember how I got the Morgan. I think I traded something for it. Yeah, uh, for this Morgan head and cabinet, and I liked it so much. I profiled it and. And it was, I decided it was probably going to be a keeper amp. So right, I thought, right. I'm going to take this on the road just for a palate cleanser. You know, I've been using the Kemper on the road for five years. I thought, I'm just going to take a real amp out. Get that visceral kind of thing you get with a real amp. Mm -hmm. So put a pedal board together for it and was getting ready to do that. And I started thinking about all the things I don't want to do. I don't right. have to mic cabinets. Right. So I got one of the Sewer Reactive Load IRs and uh -huh. loaded my IR, my favorite cabinet in there. So then I'm running uh, the... Morgan into my or my pedal board in the Morgan with the IR thing and then I was still I was trying to program for the show and I thought well I'm not gonna have my harmonizer now for my two <laughs> or three solos that I need the harmonizer on so then uh, I'm not gonna have the rotary speak well I had a, a Lex rotary thing so right anyway so I started thinking about it so it morphed from going just for the pedal board of the Morgan and then the pedal board Morgan to the sur reactive load and then I started trying to compare I did something crazy I put the real amp with the sewer reactive load IR mm -hmm. yeah. in an effects loop on the Kemper. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right. So I could turn the amp and stack up, her turn the whole stack yeah, off yeah, yeah. and just use that. So I was just using the Kemper for effects. Mm -hmm. This lasted about a day, honestly. Right. Um, <laughs> so now I'm using a real amp and the sewer reactive load IR and just using the Kemper for effects. And it sounded great. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought, that's just a lot of crap to carry. Yeah. So then I started A being. Yeah. What but, were you getting that you weren't getting with just the Kemper? Well, because you like having. And this, here's the deal. Yeah, I, f I found out the difference wasn't the amp. Right. It was the pedals. I see. Yeah. So, I was a being. I was you know had my game pedals and and everything. Mm -hmm. What I really missed with going just Kemper was the game pedals. Because the game pedals in there are, are good, they're okay. Mm -hmm. But using a real pedal in the loop of the Kemper just opened it up and made everything sound bigger. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the dynamic range got bigger mm -hmm. and it sounded less compressed. You could get the gain and volume or whatever, but it wasn't as, as compressed. So 
that's why this year I've been, so I ditched the whole reactive load and real amp thing and just realized that if I just put a couple of gain pedals in here, uh, I can use all the effects that I love and know and I'm used to, and I still get the amp sound that I like. So I basically use a clean platform and two or three gain pedals. We've got to shoot out, I think, some of those, like, some type of setup where we compare how you feel about the pedals, how they're being, like, maybe versus the real thing. Or and I've like even tried to profile the exact pedals I use in the loops, and they don't sound... Right. I mean, they sound similar. I mean, because right, the Kemper right, right. does capture things pretty well. It's it, more of a compression and just feel thing. It does. Uh, and I wonder if we couldn't try the two sort of pedal tricks, which is taking the dirtier profile and backing off the gain a bit to get you more headroom with the profile yeah. so that it knows kind of how it's coming up. And then the other thing is using, um, is not using the front input. Is mm. using, we'll, we'll get into it, but there's some people out there who are saying that they have a lot more success by putting a loop in slot A and going into re the return of that loop in slot A mm -hmm. instead of the input of the Kemper because you have a level on the loop and the level on the loop boosts the signal on the output but then it pads the input on the return. So now you're plugging into a, a return input with no input stage on the Kemper and you have a pad. Hmm. So you actually can pad the return so then you can you can slam it as hard as you want and you don't have to worry about yeah. it. Red light, green. Some people say that it, they feel like it improves not hmm. going into the front, going into the alternative input. Well, it seems way easier just to put a couple pedals in the loop. <laughs> it does seem easier to put pedals in the loop. Well, I think it's for the guys who want to run a full pedal board up front and they right. just have a toaster yeah, yeah, behind yeah. it, right? I mean, not, not. So, like on my big rig, I've got a, a, a head, power, mm -hmm. or not a power head, just a head. Yeah. And it only has one, one effects loop. So, yeah. I've got all my pedals in a on a board with a hex, Voodoo Lab hex switcher, right. so I can tell it which ones to turn off and on and then program it to be off or on on yeah. the Kemper. Now my fly rig is the stage and I'll just use two gain pedals with it because they have two separate loops. Sure. So I can program it to be the light gain or the medium gain. Yeah. And well, now for high gain stuff, I'll still use, not the gain pedals, but I'll use a, a high gain rig because that, you just can't beat the yeah. high gain stuff in the Kemper. What do you got? What else is here? I see, um, I see your 72 Marshall. You're famous for these Marshalls. Yeah, it's and it's my favorite Marshall that I've ever owned. This is um, this is probably a newer one. I've profiled this amp numerous times, numerous, numerous times. Mm -hmm. This is a, it's the same amp that was in pack one, mm -hmm. um, and maybe one of my later packs. I can't remember. But yeah. this is just a newer profile of the same amp, but it's just a. <laughs> You know, sometimes people say that we don't do high gain. And whenever I hear a sound like that, I go, it's as, it's as high as I ever heard. I mean, not as I've ever heard, but right. it's as high as a Marshall goes. Yeah. You know? Well, maybe well it's probably max, more because but... I goose it, I think, with a Timmy or a Klon. Right. But, um, yeah, it's... and I don't know what it sounds like on the recording because we're yeah. recording this direct. But we yeah, also we're have going... this little cab in Yeah, the we're just listening through through your signature so, uh, powertrain. So when I hear it at this here. volume level where we could almost talk over it, it yeah. sounds muffled and all yeah. like this, but... Um, most of my pre or most of my sounds are meant to be either played right pretty loud yeah. or just I have them in my ear in my ear monitors where it's right. as far from my ear so right. it's pretty bright yeah so but that's that's another thing about the camper I hear complaints about is just it doesn't sound the same well throw it on the bridge were you on the bridge just now yeah yeah <laughs> There you go. I made it brighter. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got to do. Take a lot. <laughs> no, it's true. I'll put this big of five point eight where you had it. No, I mean it doesn't sound dark to me at all. I, I to me it sounds full. It just sounds mid rangey. Yeah, you know it's what I mean. Mid rangey, but yeah, at, at the level I play that, to me it all just kind of levels back mm -hmm, out, mm -hmm. and that's the whole Fletcher Munson Munson. Yeah, you know, hearing yeah, our yeah. ears hear volume def differences as tone. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, and, and the, this thing sounds great. It definitely imparts a, a bit of high-end roll-off. Yeah. And that's what you get from just having a speaker in a room 
that you don't point at your ears, right. which is very different than the sensation of pointing monitor, uh, uh, studio monitors right at your ears, right? right? We always point them at our ears. And well, and I'm so used to having amps blowing behind me at yeah. my knees, so I don't want all that high-end stuff. Yeah. That's why I don't like FRFRs that point back in my head, generally, as a yeah. rule. Just, yeah. I shy away from that. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think, you know, full stacks... Were were our were, maybe I think a lot of guys liked full stacks just because the amp was pointed at their ear finally, yeah, yeah. you know, and they actually are not hearing the bouncing <laughs> and the reflection. They're actually hearing the amp, but for the first time, the speaker's up up right. at their ear. I mean, I never had the roadies to <laughs> do a full stack, but I brought a full stack to church one time. Did you? Excommunicated me I'm not, that week. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I've never even owned a full stack. I think a half stack's all over. I had a full stack in the living room of my of the house I was living in in college. And I had a, I had one of those tall two twelve Fender cabs and a Marshall full stack, Jeez. and I sucked. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I but being, you know what? I thought it was awesome. You know, I remember being like sixteen or I don't remember mm-hmm. how old it was, but my parents left and I pulled my four twelve Marshall with the fifty watt head on it, <laughs> and I just cranked it, and it was so loud the walls were shaking, and and, and then she came home early and I got in trouble. <laughs> So what do you look for? What makes a great profile to you? Like what do you those are those are the ones that you're using a lot live and and you've been using pedals with them. So they're a yeah. little on the cleaner side. They're uh, right. black face, maybe a little on the um you know blank canvas side right. of things, you know. Obviously you have a lot of other profiles that do other stuff. The train like, the train wreck is a unique one. Oh, that's you, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's and it's a it's a unique it does a thing. It doesn't do everything. Right. You know what I mean? It doesn't even clean up. Completely. I grew up as a guy that played a clean amp with pedals. I right, mean, for right. years in clubs, mm-hmm. that's what I did, because you could never get, there weren't any good master volume amps that sounded good at a low volume yeah, at the time. Yeah. And there was no modeling. Um, so if you got a Marshall, it was great, but you could never play it anywhere because it was too loud. Yeah. So I just got used to having a clean amp platform with pedals, and over the years I found the two or three pedals that I just gravitated towards constantly, and I've been using those same two pedals forever and ever and ever. So um, I just look for something that sounds thick, but and has just the right amount of gain. Like for clean sound, I like it around two, two, four, two point four, two point five. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it gets any more, it just stays too dirty. And if the it gets, gain, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if it gets any less, I feel like there's not enough oomph yeah. to it. Yeah. So I just like it anywhere between two three and two seven. But yeah. Usually around two four, two five. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I like that range. Um, kind of what you've got. Uh, you know, I, I would say the one I play all the time is a little, like, it's around here somewhere. It's a yeah. little less than that. Yeah, to me, I'm like like three, three and a half. Yeah. And um, and then I like using, uh, I, I feel like the P90s do it well, or I'll use a Strat with a humbucker and singles, and then it's yeah. sort of like the clean or mean thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. I only play this at home or in videos. I never take a, a guitar like this guitar. out. It's a beautiful guitar, but... I know I get so lost. I'm like, which one's the volume again? Why didn't they? <laughs> yeah. But you know, when you do the trick, you know, neck on five. Like that's what I was playing earlier. The neck is clean because it's on five, right. and then ten down here. Right. Right. Then it's super fun. But uh, but I don't always want to do that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a Santana headstock. Why is that? So I believe that this was the, if memory serves me correctly, this was the first single cut guitar that came out after the lawsuit. Oh wow. And um, it was before they had really decided to do the single cut, the five nine four stuff, but it was, it's called the Ted McCarty, which Paul says is was a you know uh, because Ted had done some consulting at PRS. I think they had won the lawsuit, and then the next model out was the Ted McCarty, like it was mm-hmm. a uh, <laughs> thumb in their nose. Yeah, it was a way. thumb in their nose kind of thing. But it has the fifty seven oh eight pickups. They just made those. Yep. Uh, they hadn't gone to the two piece bridge yet, and I think to get it a little more in the vein, they put the Santana headstock, which is you know um, just a little more. I wouldn't even say traditional. It's just less pointy. Yeah, just less less noticeable than the yeah. PRS. I think maybe they thought this was a little. Just something else, but not a Santana. But to my knowledge, the only PRS guitar that has a Santana headstock yeah. that's not a Santana. And, um, you know, whenever I put, like, check out this Les Paul, people always remind me in the YouTube comments that that's yeah. not a Les Paul. It's in the vein of the Les Paul. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, that's not a strap. Play play my... So this this is my favorite, like, mid-game that I've had forever and ever. It's a, it's a Tweed 56 Pro. Yeah. Um, it's, it's in, I forget which pack. 56 Pro 8. Anyway, that's one of my favorites. Why don't we play this little star guitar?
That's a good one. Just a basic tweed, you know, yeah. crunchy sound. I love those little amps because they can sound big, you know, and angry. Oh, yeah. That's got an 8-inch speaker. No, the Pro is 15-inch. The Pro, okay, okay. Yeah, but I yeah. didn't profile the actual speaker. It's still my classical e-day. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mike Campbell kind of, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Tom Petty stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, they never clean their guitars. No? Ever? Mm. Mike Very... has a telly that they've never cleaned. Oh, that's disgusting. It really is. I kind of <laughs> want to do it with one of my guitars. Uh, I can't do it. Well, to me, a great profile uh, uh, is the one that you're, uh, that you're most happy with. You're inspired by? Inspired by, and um, it. Uh, I think it can be the amp that you are most used to. Yeah. And I know, you know, for me, every weekend, I say that the, the, that the Rec was my favorite, but um, every weekend I'm playing a 90s Vox AC30. A lot of times it's a profile that I made with the King of Tone in front of it. Mm -hmm. And it just goes from clean to like a little overdriven on that amp, and then, you know, I got the KOT for... I think we all hear the sound stuff. in our head that we want to hear, mm -hmm. so it's a matter of finding that amp. And a lot of times it's because you've played that real amp so for so long. That was my rig. That's your mental yeah. fingerprint of that amp. Yeah, and that's what I want, uh, you know, on Sunday mornings. I know how it's going to sound. Those it, 90s AC30s are amazing. Yeah, the they six are. Six input ones? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. TV6. Or yeah, and they j it, to me it just works for that style of music and what's yeah. and musically like what's going on there. And the cool thing about having a Kemper is you can add some low end that you might not be able to get in the yeah. real world and yeah. and tweak it in ways that you can't do on the real Totally. Line. Boost the mids up, get the yep. presence up a little bit, it, depending on the guitar and stuff. Yep. Um, I've, I'll use it with an old, uh, an old like 64 Starfire and the pickups are real sort of um, they just don't sound like very hefty, mm -hmm. but I can fix that. And yeah. then it sounds great, you know? And then people are like, whoa, crazy guitar. And I'm like, yeah. did you hear it without the, all the, <laughs> without the Kemper? It doesn't sound that good, but it's awesome. Right. Well, uh, hey, leave in the comments below uh, what's your favorite profile. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Ben HW. I'm Ben Britt. And uh, thanks so much for watching. HW and Ben Britt out.